the campus of Alabama A&M up in Huntsville. Because for some of the things, particularly the civil pastor we're talking to you about today, this is kind of, this part of the country is really where the best home for that practice is. So really trying to get a better national coverage for the different kind of um, practices that are out there. As you might imagine, uh, things in Nebraska that are of great interest, living snow fences, not so big an issue down here. So well, some of the things break out differently depending on where you're at. But civil pastor, so silvo is, is actually a Latin word meaning tree, referring to tree, and then pastor is pretty obvious. It's not new in some parts of the world. They've done this in parts of South America, New Zealand, other, even in the UK, they're doing more of this now. But the US, is, it's really kind of, first, maybe 30 years ago, Cliff Lewis did some research for the Forest Service way back then. And that's what George Owens picked up on and started working with Cliff to get some stuff in the ground. But it was just some individuals deciding to try it. And, and in fact, some of what we learned was what they learned as, as they went along with it. But I'd say in the last 10 years, there's really much more of a, I think a very concerted interest in it, particularly in the South. And it comes from a couple of different places. So how many of you guys are getting rich growing trees? Or no people getting rich growing trees? Anybody? Okay. And then how many people are getting rich just off past <laughs> and, and, and what you've got is you, you've got an ability on a piece of ground to really kind of overlay two ways to get incomes. So if we back up, we look at, we look at forestry. You know, Alabama's got a big forestry industry, a lot of forest, a lot of trees on the ground in this state. And, and it works if you're in a place where you have the markets. Some places still have a pulp market, still sell the chips and the small materials. But, uh, some places not so much. If they've gone away, they're not necessarily coming back. Uh, some places <coughs> uh, you can sell the, the poles. Some places you can the saw timber. And, and so depending on what that is, that, that works. And if you've got all of those markets, then forestry, the way we've done it for a long time in this state, works come in, you plant maybe 700 trees an acre, 650, 750. The idea there is you want to get these pine trees totally occupying the site. And you see many of these stands around the state, and by age six, seven, there's nothing underneath them except pine needles. And they're pruning themselves because they're shading each other's lower branches off. You've got a dense canopy there. So that's one of the reasons we, you know, we like to go to those, I would say, 700 trees an acre. A couple things. You're not going to make any money until you thin those, though. So if you're waiting for some cash flow, you may be age 10 before you go in and do a thinning on some of those. If your pulp market's there, that's good. You can maybe get some money out of that. Certainly pay for the thinning. If it's not, you've got a problem. You've got trees that you got to get out of there, because even if you're not going to graze it, you're going to stunt the rescue of trees, because trees are just kind of like carrots with a big eagle. I mean, they're just, you know, they start crowding each other out. You can have a few big ones, or you can have a lot of little ones course the money for the bigger ones. So some folks are saying, well, you know, it would be nice to have a cash flow along the way. It also would be nice to have a little more flexibility when I do my forest management. So if I've got 700 trees an acre out there and now they're 10 years old, I've only got a couple of years where I've got to do that thing. Because if I don't get it, the insects will, the fire's going to get it, they're going to stagnate on me. So you, you, even if your markets aren't good, that's when you got to do something about in those trees now. What some people will do instead, and, and George is an example of that, is you can come in with a lot less trees to start with if you're coming from scratch into a cropland or into some kind of an old field situation. You might come into a pasture you've already got the forage started. That's nice. You don't have that establishment cost. And what what most people have done is done with gone with this double row set. So maybe eight or ten feet between the rows about in there, and then within the rows, you might go four, but you could go six, you could go, you could vary that spacing in there depending on how many you wanted. You heard, you heard talk about eight foot between and four foot between the trees within the row, 40 foot alleys between the next double row set. When you do that kind of thing, you get about, what, about 400 trees an acre, but you can play around with that. There's nothing sacred. Now, if you do that, what you're doing is you're saying, I got a use for about 200 of these 400 trees before they get very big. So you got something you can do. You can chip them, somebody's going to do that for you. You don't have to prune those because you're not going to prune that early and then those aren't going to be crop trees for saw logs anyway. But you could come in with 200 trees an acre to start with if you didn't have a pulp market, if you didn't expect to have one. 
all that's going to happen there is those trees that are there are going to grow a little faster. Most of those are going to be crop trees to begin with, and you're going to have more forage in the tree. But if you come in in that kind of situation with 200 or 400, you got to pray. You're going to get too much side light on those trees. They're not going to shed their lower branches. They're going to have the light to retain them. So you, you've already made a decision. You're going to manage that. So don't get into this if, you're not, if you don't have a plan for that. If you're not planning to do that, you have a bunch of junk trees with big old honking knots and large side branches. So, so there's a commitment when you start that. It works for southern pine. George has got slash pine. He's got bob holly. We know it works for longleaf. We uh, mark this stand with, with paint, uh, I believe it's spring of last year. So we've almost had two growing seasons since it's been thinned here. The, uh, Mr. Hayes, I want to thank him for letting us use this property today to, to demonstrate this, but uh, this stands 19, 20 years old. It was thinned in 2000 to begin with. There was an operator select uh, thinning, and they took a lot of the good trees that should have been left out during that first thinning. And then last spring, we came in here and marked trees with paint. Uh, this is a plot centered plant. Will, my partner here, he and I put a 10th acre plot in yesterday, and there's a, 11 trees on a 10th acre, so if you multiply that by 10, that's 110 trees. Uh, and that's about where we want to be. You'll notice there's a few cankers that we left. Had we had this stand to begin with, we would have, those trees would have probably been taken out or anyhow we would have had 110 trees to the acre without cankers on them if, if because and it's not just throwing off too much on a, on the logger but you can't a uh, logger can't see out of his equipment like a man on the ground can actually doesn't have the time to actually look up and down the trees but these trees will go from 9 to 12 inches in diameter and Basal area is a little bit higher. We could have took, taken it down a little bit thinner to have a little bit more grass, but when you, uh, we're gonna see one tomorrow where they took it down to about 70 trees to the acre. And I think it's a little more subject to wind throw than what this right here would be. Uh, but to kind of give you an idea on the economics of it, normally here when pulpwood is seven to ten dollars a ton you can look at a, around 300 350 dollars an acre from your first stand in at age 12 and normally and these are ballpark our economy's down a little bit right now on your second thin in you're looking normally at about five to six hundred dollars an acre and now what we'll do is judging by the amount of sunlight that's on out here at 110 trees an acre i don't think this stand will hold uh I think it'll need thinning again in about five years to keep the sunlight going. And we'll take this down to about 50 to 60 of the very best. We'll take all the cankered trees out at that time. And what we'll try to do is grow a small log. But that thinning in five years should bring somewhere in the neighborhood of five to six hundred dollars on it. The goal from the forestry standpoint, the economic standpoint, is if you've got 50 to 60 trees for your and what I'm going to call, I'm going to refer to them as crop trees. If you've got 50 to 60 trees and it takes 20 to 25, 28, somewhere in that neighborhood, depending on the size of a 30-year-old tree to make a float of saw logs. And saw timber is off right now. I was selling saw timber for $50 a ton two years ago, and I'm doing good to get $30 a ton. But let's just use an average of, say, $40 a ton in 10 years on this, and we could get two loads of saw logs out of this at $1,200 a load, then that's $2,400 per acre. And that's that's your goal on the for the wood, is for the landowner to grow a, a 15, 14 to 16 inch saw log at the end of the rotation. 